All right, well, I think you've already noticed things are a little different. Uh, here in Grand Rapids, COVID cases are getting a little spooky. So we're changing our format a little bit here. So it's just gonna be me in front of the camera and way over there, Amy's behind the camera. And For now, don't get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> and Ben's somewhere within earshot. We'll see how that goes. I'm not really here. <laughs> uh, so, Let's have a look at what we got in. Uh, I think a lot of the stuff we got in is more of the types of things we've been selling. So if you're looking to add to your tools, that has a lot more weight to it than I expected. <laughs> um, so if you're looking to expand some of your schools or you're just, you missed out on them last time, maybe we got something in here for you. All right, we got a nice group of blue paradise fish. These have been very popular lately. Very energetic and they are already starting to color up. That's encouraging. Ooh, a nice group of survey corys. This is a personal favorite for me when it comes to cory cats. Like I like most cory cats, but these guys just, I don't know what it is about them, but that pattern is just, it's exquisite. <laughs> we got some South American puffers. I was not expecting these. I'm assuming these are special orders. We get them whenever we can find them. <laughs> All right, well, let's put it that way then. Okay, this one was something I cheated and looked on the list at. Um, these are wild pot of Delphi quarries, which is really cool because I genuinely think this is the first group of wild caught Adolphites that have been in the store while I've been associated with the store. <laughs> Let's see what else we got in here. Ooh, some Alanacaras. These look like juvenile red shoulders. I don't really have a lot to say about these at this size because I used to seeing them as the adult males that are stunning. Um, so it's a cheaper alternative if you're not willing to pay that. I think it's like $59.99 for once you can sex them. <laughs> More Gardner Achilles. Uh, it's shocking to me how well we are selling these in the store. Um, so kudos to everyone out there that's like really bought into that. We should try Achilles podcast that we released, but uh, you all surprised us. <laughs> Whoa, I have no idea what these are. Exilis cats? Those are a dwarf wood cat species. Most of the wood cats get huge, those guys get like four inches. Whoa. Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> they came in much bigger than I was expecting. <laughs> huh. All right, well, I guess there's still surprises in store. And more Hebrosis quarry cats. These are one of the um, pygmy species. They're gonna get a little bit larger than like the pygmaeus, and but they're a lot easier to sex. So if you wanna breed a dwarf quarry cat, I think they're an easier way to go about it than the pygmaeus. Not just because they're easier to sex, but my experience has been is they're a little less finicky to get to lay eggs. All right, we're filming it. We're filming? Yeah. All right, on to the next box. Yeah. We don't need that anymore. Get that out of here. Now. A little bit more practice at this now. But of course, I say that and then I'm not looking. And then I'm going to get snagged on something. Or slice yeah. your finger off. Yeah. Bag of auto cats. <laughs> They're all very active. That's always promising. This is definitely a fish that 
benefits from quarantine because they seem to be really prone to shipping stress. And I think they kind of need that like time of chilling out in a group before you do anything with them. It looks like yellow labs and that's what the bag says. So I'm happy that I at least know what that is. You know, this is a fish that's pretty rare in the wild, but they're just really popular. So we breathe the hell out of them. <laughs> And given that shade of yellow, it's, I can't blame people for it. It's just, it's a gorgeous fish. Ooh, this is a big, this is not three inches. <laughs> so this is a yellow melon discus and in the invoice it says three inches. This is very clearly larger than that. <laughs> but you know, and another one. It's always good to get them in pairs. Sorry, I'm just checking them out to make sure they're doing okay. Definitely a fish that should be kept in a warmer tank. Um, that's actually one of the tricky parts about keeping discus is that it's hard to find things that can handle like 88 degree temperatures. <laughs> now, I mistook this initially for another bag of autocats, but these are actually very known pandagaras. Uh, these are definitely a seasonal fish and not like seasonal in the idea that their availability fluctuates. They're seasonal in, depending on the time of year, they either come in this big or they come in this big. <laughs> and so when you come in and you're like, man, these are a lot bigger, or man, these are a lot smaller. It's because we've changed seasons. <laughs> Ooh. So I'm going to butcher this name because this is not a quarry cat I see very often, but it's Afro Pearson Addis. Polka dot. It's a polka dot quarry cat. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's got a pattern that is not very common with quarry cats because they usually have kind of a grid pattern where this is just like spots down the sides. Like a, think like a Trilineatus or a Julie Cory cat or a Sturbin. Those are more typical color patterns that you'd see in Cory cat. We got some neon tetras, a ubiquitous staple in the hobby and with good reason. They're like they're my mom's personal favorite fish, and I can never get over that. You know, like they were always around. All right, that's it for that box what we got over here now. Yes, I cheated a little. I uh, preemptively cut the top on this one. <laughs> uh, it's for, you know, efficiency and not because I'm scared of looking silly on camera, you know. There's going to be a lot of cichlids in here. So this is a lemon jake alanacara. Now, when I first looked at the invoice, I didn't actually look at numbers for these. So I expected more like full grown males, not these juveniles. And I can understand why that happened because we've been getting a lot of questions about them. And if you're looking to try and breed them or you want more than one, Getting a group of juveniles is much more viable and a lot easier to do because the adults can be kind of temperamental in deciding whether they want to get along or not. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So these are Rubros striatus tetras. I'm assuming these are the glass cat, the other glass cat, the glass tetras. They're a honey granis species. This was a Ben request. They should get a good like neon red stripe down them. A little bit longer body, kind of like a rummy nose tetra, um, but bigger than a rummy nose, obviously. Yeah, they definitely have some heft to them. They, uh, I'm intrigued to see what colors will show up while they're in quarantine. Well, the pictures on the internet made them look really cool. More Bridget case. These would be the chili reds for it. And yes, I did forget for a second which one. <laughs> The by far the most popular nano fish in the hobby right now, and with good reason. Um, I will throw out there that they're gorgeous, but I would look at some of the other reservoirs in the genus that are all equally beautiful, but 
if you're looking to be like, I want to have this nano fish, but I want to be just a little different, check them out. Like the exclamation point reservoirs, those are great. Those are gorgeous. Um, and actually, those are what Amy keeps in one of her, our nano tanks here. Those are not chili reservoirs. Those are just fully colored exclamation points. <laughs> These would be wild caught cardinal tetras. If you're curious for why uh, wild caught, check out our podcast on wild caught versus tank raised fish. Uh, the long story short is um, conservation. Uh, that's not really the context of this type of video that I want to talk about it, but maybe in a future video. So these are going to be dwarf neon rainbows and they look pretty good. And I'm only taking a quick, quick look. I'm sitting on them a little bit longer because the last group we got in was pretty male heavy, but this time around, it looks like we're a little too heavy, which is kind of what I prefer because I think this is a fish that benefits having a two to one sex ratio. Um, just because then the males have a real incentive to show off. And if you're trying to keep them for display purposes, that's really the way that you should keep them. Like if you want that color, you need females to, to incentivize them to do that. Finally. <laughs> so we have a mono shrimp. <laughs> been trying to get them in for about a month and they just haven't been available. But here you go, we got a mono shrimp. All right, so these are very curly, super red Episto Pachytoides. Um, by far the most popular Episto, and I'm sure you can see the colors from there uh, with good reason. <laughs> um, I like some of the wild types better, but that's not really a preference against that. It's just I like some of the wild Agassiz eyes and Pandoras more than I like Cockatoides. Um, it looks like Dwarf Pike Cichlids, Nothalamus. I'm assuming these are the ones that Ben wants. He's been waiting for them for <laughs> weeks. They better look good. I can already tell that they're males and females. So I think he'll be happy. Okay, these ones are labeled as ornate glass tetras. And now that I see them in the bag, these are very clearly a glass tetra. <laughs> um, you might not be able to see them from there because they are small and they are very much transparent. But maybe you'll be able to see like an eyeball or a stump just hanging in the water there. And then we got our, some more half moons. We've been getting in some really cool colors on half moons lately. This looks like another one of those. This is going to sound so mean. It looks like another reject mustard. <laughs> um, we've been getting in a few that are very clearly from mustard stock, and they're just not like up to snuff for that color variety. But that means that you can get a really cool color feta for a much cheaper price. It looks like this is. I can't tell. It's definitely not a dragon scale, but he does have that iridescence. There's an almost green quality to him, depending on which angle you're looking at him. And then this is a more standard bicolor feta, but I don't say that in a like disparaging way. This is actually one of my favorite color combinations, red and blue. I, I just like the contrast of a warm and cool color like that. It just looks great. And if you're going to have one fish, like you would in like a two and a half gallon, uh, go for it and get something insanely colored. Last box. And we still have a lot of ground to cover. Um, and I'm speaking in the context of, I did peek and look at the list beforehand because uh, Amy kind of sort of made this order on her own. Um, so a little, some of these are surprises, like those wood catfish. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> that one got some distance. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a type of Neolampologus. I can tell because they look cranky. Neolampologus tretocephalus. They're kind of like the mini frontosa. They look like one, but they only get like six inches. 
you know, that's respectable. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, the, 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 this is the big one, okay? So I get at, whenever I get asked about killifish, I get asked about this one specifically. So this is Nothobranchius bovocii. Um, this is by far the most name-dropped Notho, and with good reason. A lot of people would argue that it is the most colored or most beautiful freshwater fish in the hobby. Um, I would give you some good counterpoints, but I don't judge anyone that says that because, yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Um, when you look at it, pictures of it online, uh, those are not doctored. That's, a, that's exactly what it looks like. They're insane. Espe resboros. So these are going to be the lamb chop or pork chop resboros. They are very similar to harlequin resboros, but they don't get as stocky. So depending on what kind of tank you're setting up, they may or may not be a better fit for your tank. Um, for someone like me, they're found in regions that overlap many types of bettas that I keep. So the espes are more common in my tanks than the harlequins just because of that. All right. Glow light Daniel. So these are the Chef Ray Daniel. This is easily my favorite species of Daniel. And I think Daniels don't really get enough attention in the hobby because they are so, like everyone thinks zebra daniel and they're like, oh, it's a beginner's fish. Once you're beyond that, you, like a lot of people move on. But they're all very easy to eat fish and they can come in all sorts of colors and they are great dither fish because most species are not shy. Um, Chokray daniels in particular are very common in my fish tanks because my wife's favorite fish are celestial coral daniels, and I use chop ray daniels as dither fish because celestials are one of the shyer daniels. But having another species of daniel that's similarly sized and hanging up near the top seems to encourage them to come out more. Um, and if you're spending that much on a daniel, you might as well get something that helps them be out in the open more. Another staple in the hobby, these are rosy bars. Another fish that I don't think gets enough attention, in particular because rosy barbs are one of the few things I know of that eats black brush algae and hair algae. To the point where if I get a group of them that's particularly voracious for it, uh, when we're pulling like hair algae from some of our like, tanks, we'll just throw them in with the barbs because they're just like, oh, it's a treat, and then it means we don't have to you know, walk across the room and <laughs> throw it away. Neolampologus re lepi. And Lake Tanganyikans are easily my weakest spot in cichlids, so I don't have much more to say than it's a Tanganyikan cichlid, and they always look cranky to me, so. Alright. Wow. So these are red zebras. This is a Malawi cichlid. And they look great. From there, I'm fairly positive you can see the color on them. They are insane. That's cool. All right. So these are Pseudotrophus, or Pseudotrophius, depending on how you want to pronounce it, Sokolophi. Sokolophi? Sokolophi. I'm going with Sokolophi, and I'm committing to that. It's not a, they're fairly common, but again, cichlids, at least Rift Lake cichlids, are kind of a weak spot for me. Uh, so I trust people watching probably know more about them than I do. And it looks like another Neo. These are Neolampologus redfin caudopunctatus. If I remember correctly, these are one of the shell dwellers. And that said, I think that means that they generally allow you to do colonies in smaller tanks than it would allow you with a lot of the other tank and you And behaviorally, they're kind of cool. They're fun to try and move from tank to tank because they hide in the shells, but like, it's just a fun fish. Like, I, I don't know why I'm trying to talk about it more than I know about it, but. So there you have it. Um, 
We got in a lot of really cool fish, a lot of staples in the hobby, but most of them are staples for good reasons. Um, feel free to give us a like, comment. Uh, we can, we're gonna do two week quarantine on everything in here. So if you'd like to put a poll on anything in particular, let us know. Uh, feel free to check us out, our podcasts, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. And I guess I'm gonna go on a little rant here. Uh, the world is a little, we're not used to uncertainty. So I think it's important to remind each other that it's okay to feel unsure about your day-to-day -day life. And because we've been very fortunate. And so, you know, have fun with your tanks, make sure your loved ones know that you love them and stay safe out there and keep those hands wet. My bad. <laughs> oh. You get to keep going, I'll spend the other one. Alright, I'm gonna lift this up real quick.